you've objected at weddings or seen someone object, what happened in the next five minutes? Story one, I used to work as an assistant at a lot of weddings over in the UK, either helping out with the setup or sometimes being part of the music. Weddings there have a certain vibe, classy, but with that touch of British humor where people never take themselves too seriously. One thing I've noticed is that no matter how serious the ceremony is, there's always room for a bit of a laugh, especially when it comes to the part where the officiant asks if anyone objects to the marriage. Nowadays, they usually ask this speak now or forever hold your peace question pretty early in the ceremony, and most people just chuckle at it. It's become more of a tradition than a genuine moment of reflection, you know. Most of the time, the bride and groom smile awkwardly. The guests glance at each other, and everyone just carries on like normal. It's a moment for the crowd to loosen up, a chance to laugh before the heavy vows come rolling in. But one wedding stands out in my memory, and I've never forgotten it because of how that little moment turned into something far more than anyone expected. It was a fairly traditional wedding. Church, organ music, the works. The couple seemed like your standard, happy pair. They weren't over the top or anything, just a nice down-to-earth bride and groom, clearly excited to tie the knot. The ceremony itself was beautiful. The kind of wedding where everything's running on time, the kids in their little flower girl outfits aren't screaming, and nobody's stumbling over the readings. You could tell the couple had put a lot of thought into it. The guests were all in good spirits, ready to celebrate. Everything was rolling along perfectly until we got to the part where the officiant asks the crowd if anyone has any objections. As usual, there was that little pause, a few polite chuckles rippling through the crowd, and you could feel everyone getting ready to just move past it. You know, the way it always goes. But then, one of the best men, a tall, lanky guy with a bit of a cheeky grin, decided to make a moment out of it. He cleared his throat loudly, just as the officiant said, if anyone knows any reason why these two should not be married. At first, everyone laughed. You could see the guests grinning, probably thinking this was just another one of those playful interruptions. Except this guy didn't stop. What started as a throat clearing soon turned into a full-on coughing fit. It was over the top, exaggerated, and completely intentional. The bride and groom both turned around to look at him, eyebrows raised. The groom was trying not to laugh, but you could see his lips twitching. The best man was hunched over, dramatically clutching his chest, gasping like he was fighting for air. At this point, the whole crowd was in stitches. People were laughing so hard they were wiping away tears. Even the efficient had to pause and wait for the room to settle down. Now here's the thing about weddings. They're supposed to be these perfectly orchestrated events, right? But sometimes it's the unexpected moments, the things you couldn't script if you tried, that really stick with people. And this was one of those moments. The more the best man faked his coughing fit, the harder people laughed, until it hit this point where the ceremony had to come to a complete stop. You could see the bride trying her best to keep a straight face, but even she couldn't help but giggle. The groom, meanwhile, was bent over, practically in tears from laughing so hard. After what felt like an eternity, the best man finally recovered. He straightened up, gave a little wave like, don't worry, I'm fine and the crowd erupted into applause. I swear, it was like someone had just pulled off the best stand-up comedy routine of the year, right in the middle of the ceremony. Everyone was clapping and cheering, and the tension that usually comes with the seriousness of the wedding just vanished. It was brilliant. Once things finally settled down, the officiant shook his head, grinning, and said something like, well, I suppose that's a no then? Which got another round of laughter from the crowd. The ceremony picked back up, and everything went smoothly after that. But that coughing fit? That's what everyone was talking about at the reception. Throughout the night, I overheard guests joking about it, saying things like, well, that was close, or almost thought we'd have to call it off there for a second. Even the bride, who you'd think might have been a little annoyed at the disruption, was laughing about it. She kept saying, leave it to him to make a scene, and gave the best man a playful slap on the back whenever someone brought it up. The groom, though, was the funniest. Every time someone asked him how he felt about his best man's performance, he'd just shake his head and say, Well, he tried to stop me, but it's too late now. Story 2. This one's a story I heard firsthand. It happened at my sister's wedding, and it still gets brought up at every family gathering, especially when we're reminiscing about all the weird stuff that happened on that big day. Now, weddings can be stressful enough without any unexpected surprises but no one could have seen this one coming. It wasn't even from some crazy relative or tipsy guest. No, it was my brother-in-law's boss who decided to steal the show, and not in a good way. The day started out picture perfect, just like you'd hope a wedding would. My sister looked absolutely stunning, like she'd stepped right out of one of those bridal magazines. The weather was cooperating, which, let's be honest, is a small miracle for an outdoor wedding. My brother-in-law, James, was doing his best to stay cool under the pressure. He's a good guy, but you could tell he was feeling the weight of it all. Family, friends, the vows, the whole nine yards. 
Everything was going smoothly up to the moment we all took our seats for the ceremony. There was that typical buzz of excitement, guests chatting quietly while the music played, waiting for the big moment when my sister would make her entrance. I was sitting up front with the family, sneaking glances at James, who was standing up at the altar, looking nervous but happy. You could tell he was ready for this. He loved my sister, no question. Then, right as the officiant is about to start the ceremony, in strolls this guy. At first, I didn't think much of it. Weddings always have a latecomer or two, right? But this wasn't just any guest. It was my brother-in-law's boss. Now, I'd never met the guy before, but I'd heard plenty of stories. From what I gathered, he was one of those loud, over-the-top types who think they're the funniest person in the room. You know the type, always cracking jokes, but half the time, no one's laughing. The guy's swaggering down the aisle like he owns the place completely oblivious to the fact that the ceremony is about to start. The music is still playing softly in the background. The officiant's just about to begin, and this guy pipes up from the back, loud enough for everyone to hear. Yeah, mate, I gotta speak my piece. You could see James stiffen immediately. The rest of us were just sitting there, frozen, thinking, is this really happening? Is this guy actually about to object at my sister's wedding? My heart was in my throat, and I'm sure I wasn't the only one. The whole place went dead silent, the kind of silence that feels heavy like the air itself is holding its breath. Even the birds in the trees seem to stop chirping. The guy keeps walking toward the altar, looking around like he's confused. And then, just as James is about to lose it, he suddenly stops, blinks, and slaps his forehead. Oh, sorry, mate, wrong wedding. I swear, you could have heard a pin drop. And then, like a switch was flipped, the entire crowd burst into laughter. People were cracking up. Some guests doubled over in their chairs. And even the officiant had to cover his mouth to hide his grin. It was one of those moments that just caught everyone off guard. The tension breaking so suddenly that you couldn't help but laugh. Well, everyone except James. He was standing there at the altar, hands clenched, jaw tight, his face this perfect mix of frustration and disbelief. You could see the irritation boiling up in him, but he was trying to keep it together. Probably for my sister's sake. She, by the way, handled it like a champ. She just laughed along with everyone else, giving James this look like, don't worry, it's fine. But I could tell she knew he was pissed. The boss, after realizing he'd made a scene, gave this awkward wave, mumbled something about finding the real wedding, and turned to leave, chuckling to himself as if he'd just told the best joke of the century. The crowd was still laughing. And I have to admit, even I found it pretty funny once the shock wore off. Poor James. He just stood there, fuming. You could see he was trying to laugh it off, but it wasn't working. After the boss finally disappeared, the ceremony picked back up where it left off. The rest of the wedding went smoothly, but the whole time, you could sense James was still stewing about it. And can you blame him? It's your wedding day. You're about to marry the love of your life. And then your boss barges in and nearly derails the whole thing with a dumb joke. Later on at the reception, everyone was talking about the incident. It was the story of the night, with people retelling it over and over, each time adding their own little twist. The mood was light and my sister seemed happy enough. So most of us figured it was just one of those funny moments that would become part of the wedding chain. He wasn't laughing. Even during the speeches, when someone tried to bring it up in a lighthearted way, you could see him wince. He didn't say much about it that night, but knowing him, I'm sure he had a few choice words for his boss later. I don't think the guy meant any harm. He just seriously misjudged the situation. But that doesn't make it any less awkward for James, who probably just wanted a perfect, peaceful wedding day without any surprises. Story 3 my cousin's wedding was one of those events that just oozed love and warmth. The kind of day where everything feels right. They'd been together for years, high school sweethearts actually, and had already built a life together before deciding to finally tie the knot. They'd been engaged for what felt like forever. But life, as it often does, threw a few curveballs. They had two boys in the time leading up to the big day. And with kids, well, things tend to slow down a bit. So they put the wedding on hold until they felt it was the right moment. By the time they actually got around to planning the wedding, their boys were old enough to be a part of it, which made it all the more special. I remember my cousin saying she was glad they waited, because now the boys could stand up there with them, watching their parents finally say, I do. It was all shaping up to be a perfect, sentimental moment. But you know how kids are, unpredictable little beings with a knack for turning any situation into their own personal stage. The ceremony was simple but beautiful. Everyone gathered at this picturesque little venue in the countryside, flowers everywhere, sunlight streaming through the trees. It was one of those afternoons where you could just feel the happiness in the air. Their two boys, the eldest around five and the youngest just a toddler, were in their little suits, looking as adorable as ever, playing the role of ring bearers. They were front and center, just like my cousin had dreamed. The ceremony was going smooth. The vows were heartfelt 
the officiant was doing a great job, and you could see the tears welling up in people's eyes as they watched the couple finally get their moment in the spotlight. It was like a scene from a movie, everything falling perfectly into place. But then came that part of the ceremony, you know the one. The efficient's question that's supposed to be more of a formality than anything else. If anyone here has any objections, speak now or forever hold your peace. I remember holding my breath, as I'm sure most of the guests were. Not because anyone actually expected an objection, but because, let's be honest, it's that one moment in a wedding where anything could go wrong. But instead of the typical awkward pause followed by nervous laugh, we got something much, much better. Right after the efficient finished the sentence, there was this little voice from the front of the altar. My cousin's eldest son, all five years of him, suddenly piped up with a loud, determined, I do! Now, in that split second, you could see everyone's faces turn from surprise to confusion, and then quickly to stifled giggles, as we all wondered what this little guy could possibly object to at his own parents' wedding. The bride and groom, bless them, looked down at him, half amused, half bewildered. The efficient, God love him, stopped mid-sentence, unsure of how to proceed. And that's when the little boy, completely unaware of the stir he'd caused, delivered the punchline. Daddy, I need a wee! The place erupted. I mean, people were doubled over in their chairs, laughter echoing through the trees. You could see guests wiping tears from their eyes, trying to hold it together, but it was impossible. Even the efficient had to take a moment to compose himself. My cousin, bless her, just stood there, laughing along with everyone else, while her groom, who was still trying to process what had just happened, scooped up his son, and made a beeline for the bathroom. It was the kind of moment that totally derails a wedding, but in the best possible way. They paused the ceremony for a bit, waiting for the little guy to finish his business. Meanwhile, the guests couldn't stop laughing. You could hear people whispering things like, that'll be a story for the ages, and he'll never live that one down. And they were right. For the rest of the day, the running joke was all about how their eldest son had, in his own little way, objected to the wedding, not out of disapproval, but because nature called. When the ceremony finally resumed, everything went off without a hitch. They said their vows, exchanged the rings, and sealed it with a kiss, with both boys right there by their side. It was a perfect ending to a day that was full of laughter, love, and just the right amount of chaos. At the reception, it was all anyone could talk about. People kept coming up to my cousin and her husband, jokingly asking, So, did you ever get your son's blessing? Or... Any more objections we should know about? My cousin's eldest, of course, was blissfully unaware of his newfound fame. He just ran around the reception hall, playing with the other kids, completely oblivious to the fact that he had just turned a simple wedding ceremony into one of the most memorable moments of everyone's year. Story 4. I was at this wedding once, and man, I could feel in my gut something wasn't right from the start. It was one of those situations where you're sitting there, surrounded by happy, smiling faces, but you can't shake that weird tension hanging in the air. This wasn't your typical love story, not by a long shot. It was this strange, semi-arranged marriage set up by the families who were part of this tight-knit Baptist community. The groom, let's call him Jacob, was a young minister, a real straight-laced guy with his whole life devoted to the church. The bride, on the other hand, well, she was a bit of a wild card. I'd known the bride, let's call her Sarah for a while. She wasn't exactly the minister's wife type. In fact, she was known for her rebellious streak. I'm talking late-night parties, wild weekends, and a spirit that just wasn't the settle-down kind. The kind of girl who lived fast and free, but somehow there she was, dressed in white, standing at the altar, about to marry a guy who seemed like the polar opposite of her. I don't know if it was pressure from her family or the church, but Sarah didn't seem all that thrilled with her choice of husband. She went through the motions, sure, but you could tell her heart wasn't in it. Even during the ceremony, she kept looking anywhere but at Jacob at the crowd, at the ceiling, like she was searching for an exit. And honestly, I was tempted to speak up. When the preacher got to the part about objections, I felt this knot in my stomach. Part of me wanted to stand up and say something, anything, to stop the whole thing from going through. But who was I to step in? It's not like it was my place. So I kept my mouth shut and watched it unfold. After the vows were said and done, I made some excuse to leave early. I just couldn't stick around. The whole thing felt like watching a slow-motion train wreck. I wasn't exactly sure what was going to happen, but I knew it wasn't going to end well. Sure enough, I was right. The honeymoon hadn't even finished when the cracks in their relationship started to show. Word got back to me pretty quickly that things weren't going great between Sarah and Jacob. Apparently, they'd fought the entire time. She was bored. He was trying to stick to this picture-perfect, pious image of married life. And the whole thing was falling apart faster than anyone could have predicted. But the real twist? It wasn't just that the marriage was crumbling. It was how it came apart. See, Jacob's brother let's call him Tom, 
had flown in for the wedding. Tom was the black sheep of the family, no doubt about it. While Jacob had stayed close to home, becoming a minister and living that squeaky clean life, Tom had gone the opposite direction. He'd been out of town for years, living on his own terms, not really keeping in touch with the family. So, when he showed up for the wedding, it was like the prodigal son returning. Except this story didn't end with a feast and forgiveness. Turns out, while Jacob and Sarah were busy fighting on their honeymoon, Sarah and Tom were getting real close. I mean, real close. I don't know if it was the thrill of doing something forbidden, or maybe Sarah was just desperate for someone who understood her. But she ended up sleeping with Tom. It didn't take long for the whole situation to blow up. Jacob found out pretty soon after they got back from the honeymoon. You can imagine how that went over. The scandal hit the family hard. Here was Jacob, the golden boy, the minister who everyone looked up to, and his wife had just run off with his brother, the guy no one even expected to show up at the wedding. It was the kind of drama that had people whispering for weeks. The church, the community, everyone had an opinion, but no one really knew what to say. Jacob was devastated, of course, and the marriage crumbled faster than it had been put together. But here's the kicker. Sarah and Tom didn't just have a fling and call it quits. They ended up sticking together. In fact, they had a kid not too long after the whole wedding disaster. I remember hearing the news and thinking how insane the whole situation was. The girl who had been pushed into this arranged marriage with a minister, only to run off with the wild brother? It sounded like something out of a soap opera, but it was all too real. And you know what? Tom and Sarah, for all the mess that came before, they actually seemed happy together. Last I heard, they were still raising their kid and living their lives away from all the judgment and drama. It's funny how things work out sometimes. The marriage with Jacob never stood a chance. But somehow, through all the chaos, Sarah ended up with the guy she actually clicked with. The black sheep of the family turned out to be the one who made her feel alive, who understood her in a way that Jacob never could. Story 5 This story is a classic in our family, the kind of tale that gets retold at every holiday gathering, and it never gets old. It starts at my parents' wedding a beautiful ceremony that was mostly perfect, except for one memorable moment when my grandfather decided to add his own twist to the proceeding. To set the stage, my granddad had already given his blessing for my parents to get married. He liked my dad well enough, but granddad had always had a wicked sense of humor, and he just couldn't resist stirring the pot a little on the big day. So there they are, standing at the altar, my dad probably sweating bullets. The vow is just about to get underway when the officiant does the usual. If anyone has any objections, Speak now, or forever hold your peace bit. Of course, no one actually expects anyone to say anything. It's just a formality, but not when my grandfather's around. With perfect timing, Granddad stands up, holding this old, beat-up photo in his hand. Now, everyone's watching him, waiting to see what he's going to say. He waves the picture around a bit, making sure the whole crowd can see it. And then he asks, Would you let this man marry your daughter? And sure enough, the photo he's holding is of my dad, from years back during his university days after a particularly brutal rugby game. In the picture, Dad's got two black eyes, a bloody cheek, and his face is smeared with mud. He looks like he just crawled out of a fight, which, to be fair, he probably had. The crowd burst into laughter. I mean, how could they not? My dad, standing up there in his crisp suit, trying to look all serious and in love, while this embarrassing photo from his past is being waved around like evidence in a courtroom. Of course, the question wasn't really meant to be answered, but in the spirit of the joke, the entire room gave a resounding no. And that's how my dad's wedding day got a little more colorful, thanks to granddad's impeccable sense of timing. Years passed, and that story became one of those family legends. Every Christmas, every birthday, someone would bring it up, and the whole room would erupt in laughter. My dad took it in stride, always laughing along. But I think deep down, he was waiting for his moment to get even with granddad fast forward about 20 years later. My granddad, now in his 70s, decided to move to a new neighborhood, closer to family. He'd always been a bit of a character, and as part of a dare with his friends, he dyed his hair pink. Not a subtle shade of pink either, but bright, neon, stand out in a crowd pink. He thought it was hilarious and wore it proudly, much to the amusement, and slight embarrassment, of the rest of us. Unbeknownst to us, Dad saw his opportunity for revenge and seized it. After Granddad moved into his new place, Dad decided to get a little payback for that wedding day stunt. So, without telling anyone, Dad took a picture of Granddad with his bright pink hair and mailed it to several of his new neighbors. Along with the photo, he included a caption that read, Would you let this man live in your neighborhood? We didn't hear about this for weeks. It wasn't until my Granddad started getting strange looks and odd comments from his new neighbors that we pieced it together. At first, Granddad was confused. He couldn't figure out why people kept glancing at him with these amused grins. Then, one day, a neighbor stopped him while he was walking his dog and said, I loved the picture your son-in-law sent us. 
Very bold of you to dye your hair pink at your age. That's when it all clicked for him. When we finally found out what Dad had done, it was pure chaos. Granddad, being the prankster that he was, couldn't stop laughing. He knew immediately that it was payback for the wedding day joke, and he had to admit, Dad's revenge was perfectly executed. It wasn't five minutes after the objection, but it was definitely a slow burn prank that paid off big time. My dad had waited two decades to get his own back, and he nailed it. To this day, whenever someone in the family brings up that wedding day photo, my dad will just smile and say, revenge is a dish best served cold. It's become one of those stories that just keeps getting better with time, like a fine wine, or in this case, a well-aged practical joke. It's funny how these little moments, these family pranks, become the glue that holds all our stories together. And honestly, I think Granddad loved every second of it. After all, in our family, a joke that lasts 20 years is a joke worth telling for another 20. Story 6. Oh man, let me tell you about one of the most awkward moments I've ever witnessed at a wedding. It was at my buddy's sibling's wedding. And let's just say, things didn't exactly go off without a hitch. Now, her parents, super conservative, the type that think a handshake is too forward, hadn't really gotten to know the fiancé all that well before the big day. From what I understood, they weren't thrilled about him. In their minds, the only things that really mattered were that he was 10 years older than their daughter and had been divorced before. You could just feel their disapproval, like a cold draft in the room. They'd made comments here and there, some subtle, others not so much. The whole vibe leading up to the wedding had been off. Looking back, that should have been a big red flag that something was bound to go down. But despite all that, the wedding day itself was stunning. You know, picture-perfect outdoor ceremony, sunny day, happy couple, and everyone dressed to the nines. The bride and groom, they were absolutely over the moon, practically glowing. You could just tell they were head over heels for each other. And that kind of love makes everyone else fade into the background. They had invited friends and family from both sides. And on the surface, everything seemed like it was going to go smoothly. That is until the preacher hit that infamous part of the ceremony. You know, the speak now or forever hold your peace bit. And at that moment, I don't think anyone actually expects an objection. I mean, it's more of a formality than anything else, right? But this wasn't just any wedding. Nope. As serious as a heart attack, the bride's dad stands up. You could hear a pin drop. At first, I thought he was just shifting in his seat or something, but then the words came out, clear as day. Her mother and I object. And then, just like that, he sits back down. The pause that followed was excruciating. Time felt like it had stopped. Everyone in the audience sat there, wide-eyed, looking around at each other like, did that just happen? I was half expecting the groom to throw a chair or the bride to burst into tears. But it was just silence. The kind of silence that makes your skin crawl. The preacher, bless him, clearly didn't know what to do. I mean, who prepares for this? He just stood there for a second, probably as shell-shocked as the rest of us. And then as calmly as you could imagine, just said, okay, and carried on with the ceremony, as if that bombshell hadn't just been dropped. But let me tell you, the tension in the air after that was suffocating. You could practically taste the discomfort. It was like everyone was holding their breath, waiting for someone to blow up or run off, but no one did. They just pushed forward, and the bride and groom somehow managed to keep their composure. I don't know how they did it, but they made it through the ceremony and said their vows like nothing had happened. The reception after was a different story. You could feel the unease lingering, especially around the bride's parents. People were polite, sure, but there was this underlying tension that just wouldn't go away. The bride's parents, they didn't exactly make the rounds, you know? They kind of kept to themselves, clearly uncomfortable with everything that had happened. And the bride and groom? Well, they did their best to focus on each other, to soak in their day, but you could see the strain. Every time they passed the bride's parents, it was like walking on eggshells. I can only imagine what kind of conversations went down behind closed doors after that. My friend told me later that the couple pretty much avoids the in-laws now, which isn't exactly shocking. I mean, how do you come back from something like that? An outright objection at your wedding? It's not something you forget easily. The parents still aren't on board with the whole thing, but from what I hear, the couple is doing just fine, living their life and steering clear of the drama. But man, that moment, it's seared into my memory. Story 7. Oh man, this story still cracks me up. So, my friend's older brother, who happens to be a lawyer, was marrying another lawyer. Now, you can imagine, between the two of them and their circle of friends, the wedding was packed with more lawyers than I've ever seen in one place. Practically everyone there, aside from a few scattered relatives, was someone who could argue their way out of a parking ticket or convince you they were right about something you didn't even care about. The efficient? Well, of course, they went all out and had a judge officiate the ceremony. But not just any judge. This was a good friend of theirs, someone who was game for a little humor. And you know how lawyers are. 
always trying to add a clever twist or play a little joke. So naturally, the couple thought it would be hilarious to inject some courtroom-style humor into the ceremony. They came up with this plan to stage an objection during the vows. I know, right? The whole speak now or forever hold your peace bit is always nerve-wracking because you kind of think someone might object, but of course, no one ever does. Except at this wedding, they made sure someone did. They got one of their friends, another lawyer, of course, to stand up at just the right moment and shout, I object! The timing was perfect. The guy stood up, threw his hand up in the air, and boomed out the words like he was in a courtroom, his voice echoing through the crowd. There was this split second of dead silence where everyone's brains were catching up with what had just happened. I saw a few jaws drop, people looking at each other like, wait, is this serious? You could almost hear the gears turning in people's heads as they tried to process if it was real or some bizarre last-minute drama. But before anyone could freak out or start whispering, the judge, without missing a beat, slammed his hand down on his imaginary gavel and yelled, overruled, like he was handing down a verdict in an actual trial. The whole thing was so quick and flawless, it was like they had rehearsed it, which of course they probably had. Most of the room erupted in laughter. The lawyers in the crowd were howling, absolutely loving the joke. It was their kind of humor, you know, a little dry, a little on the nose, but perfectly suited for a room full of legal minds. They were all slapping each other on the back, appreciating the cleverness of it. But then you had the other half of the room, the family members, mostly older relatives, who were just sitting there, stone-faced, blinking in confusion. They didn't get it. Some of them looked outright horrified, probably thinking that the wedding was about to descend into chaos. I think there was one aunt, bless her heart, who actually started clutching her pearls, probably assuming the whole thing was about to get ugly. You could see the look on her face like she was mentally preparing for some sort of courtroom drama to break out in the middle of the vow. It was hilarious to watch the mix of reaction. After the overruled call, the judge just carried on with the ceremony like nothing had happened, and the bride and groom were grinning ear to ear, clearly proud of their little stunt. But some of the family members, especially the non-lawyers, were still a little unsure if what they had just witnessed was a joke or some strange legal battle playing out in front of them. I was sitting there trying not to laugh too loud, but it was impossible to keep a straight face. I mean, who stages an objection at their own wedding? Only two lawyers, I'll tell you that much. And the best part? They didn't film it properly. Someone caught it on a cell phone, but it's one of those shaky, poorly lit videos where you can't really appreciate the brilliance of the moment. I'm still dying to see the official wedding video when it comes out, just to relive that moment in all its glory. I can't even imagine how great it's going to look with the perfect camera angles and the judge's booming voice echoing through the speakers. Story 8. Everything was going smoothly at The ceremony went off without a hit. Everyone was all smiles, the bride looked stunning, and the groom looked like the happiest guy on earth. The kind of wedding where you think, Man, these two are meant for each other. After the I do's and the photos, everyone headed to the reception, ready for the usual food, drinks, and celebration. You know how it goes. The atmosphere was buzzing, people were dancing, the drinks were flowing, and everyone was having a great time. Then came the speeches. Now, we've all seen some speeches at weddings that are a little off. The ones where the best man rambles on too long or the maid of honor cries a bit too much. But this, this was next level. So, the best man gets up, clearly feeling a little loose from the open bar. And he starts off with your typical best man stuff. A couple of funny stories about the groom, some light roasting, nothing too bad. Everyone's laughing, clinking their glasses, enjoying the moment. But then he decides to take it in a very different direction. He starts talking about the time he and the bride hooked up. Now, I don't mean he was hinting at it or making a vague inside joke reference. Nope. This guy goes straight in making jokes about how they had a wild night way back when. And not just once either, he kept going, throwing in little details like it was some kind of raunchy comedy routine. At first, there were a few awkward laughs in the crowd because everyone's thinking, oh, surely the groom knows about this, right? But as he kept talking, you could feel the mood in the room shift. People were glancing around, whispering to each other, unsure if this was all part of the plan or if the best man had just gone completely off the rails. And then I glanced over at the groom. His face, man, it was like he'd just been sucker punched. You could see the color drain from him. His smile was long gone, replaced with this stunned, tight-lipped expression, like he was trying to hold it together, but was one second away from losing it. That's when it hit him. The groom had no idea about this. The best man, completely oblivious to the wreckage he was causing, just kept going, chuckling to himself, thinking he was killing it with his speed. It was like watching a car crash in slow motion. By the time he finished his little jokes and raised his glass for a toast, the room was dead silent. No one moved, no one clapped, just a few awkward coughs and some murmuring. I could see the bride's face, too. She looked like she wanted to crawl under the table and disappear. 
Then the groom stood up. I'm telling you, the vibe in that room went from uncomfortable to downright icy in seconds. He didn't say anything, just locked eyes with the best man, turned to the bride, and then stormed out of the reception hall. The bride, clearly panicking, ran after him, and the rest of us were left just sitting there, stunned, trying to figure out what we had just witnessed. The best man, finally realizing what he had done, just stood there with this horrified look on his face. He tried to laugh it off, but it was way too late for that. Within minutes, word spread through the room that the reception was over. Like, officially over. No dancing, no cake, no awkwardly shuffling out the door while trying to avoid eye contact. The staff started cleaning up while the guests quietly gathered their things and filed out. The whole celebration just screeched to a halt. People were whispering in disbelief, shaking their heads, trying to figure out how a wedding that had started so perfectly had just imploded like that. My friend, who was working that night, said the staff was as shocked as the guests. They had to go around telling people to head home because the groom had called off the rest of the reception. Imagine paying for a full night of celebration, only to have it cut short, because your best man thought it would be funny to bring up a one-night stand with the bride in front of everyone. Story 9. Alright, here's one from way back when I was just a kid. I must have been about 8, maybe 9 years old, and I attended this wedding with my family. At the time, weddings were still kind of a mystery to me. All fancy clothes, flowers, and ceremonies that didn't make much sense. But I knew one thing. Weddings were supposed to be serious. You know, the kind of event where everyone's supposed to sit still and behave. Which, as a kid, felt like torture. Now, I don't remember much about the wedding itself. It was your typical setup. Church ceremony. Lots of people dressed in their Sunday best. And me squirming in my uncomfortable clothes. My brother and I were probably more interested in figuring out how much cake we could get away with eating later than paying attention to the vows. But there was one moment I remember crystal clear. And it stuck with me for years after. You know that part in the ceremony where the officiant asks if anyone has any objection? Well, like everyone else, I thought that was just something they said out of tradition and no one actually ever objected. But on this particular day, someone did. Sort of. Right when the officiant got to the speak now or forever hold your peace part, this man, probably sitting somewhere in the middle of the crowd, suddenly stands up. Now, you've got to imagine, the whole room is dead quiet. Everyone expecting him to object in some big dramatic fashion, like you see in the But instead, the guy shouts, You forgot the bread knife! I kid you not. That's all he said. Loud and clear for the entire room to hear. And then he just sat back down like he'd done his duty and saved the day. I remember looking at my brother, who looked just as confused as I was. But neither of us dared to ask what just happened. I mean... Here we were, at a wedding, and some guy was going on about a bread knife. And no one explained it. The bride and groom didn't react, the officiant didn't skip a beat, and the ceremony just carried on as if it was completely normal. Now, being young and clueless about wedding traditions, my brother and I spent the next 15 years convinced that bread knives were somehow a crucial part of getting married. In our minds, it was basically a sacred rule. If you forgot the bread knife at your wedding, you might as well call the whole thing off. I mean, we'd heard about cutting cakes with fancy knives, so it wasn't that much of a stretch to think, Maybe there was this secret bread knife tradition no one told us about. And apparently, if you forgot it, some random guy in the audience was obligated to point it out, lest your marriage be cursed or something. We even started incorporating it into our make-believe games, imagining weddings with bread knives as the central theme. Anytime we played wedding with our cousins or friends, we'd pretend someone had to stand up and remind the bride and groom about the forgotten bread knife. It became this whole inside joke between us. We thought we were in on some ancient, mysterious tradition that the rest of the world was just too cool to mention out loud. It wasn't until years later, maybe at another wedding or family event, that I finally brought it up to my parents. I must have been in my early 20s by then, and it just casually slipped out during a conversation about odd wedding moments. I asked my mom, Hey, remember that time at so-and-so's wedding, when that guy stood up and said they forgot the bread knife? What was up with that? She just stared at me for a second, completely bewildered, and then started laughing. Turns out the guy was just a little off, oh, maybe a distant uncle or some eccentric family friend. He wasn't objecting to the wedding at all. He'd just gotten it into his head that they forgot a bread knife, though why he thought that mattered at a wedding, no one ever figured out. Story 10. So, a close friend of mine, let's call him Ray, was getting married. I've known Ray for years. He's a solid guy, laid back, good sense of humor. He met this girl, Katie, a few years back. Now, Katie already had a daughter from a previous relationship but everything seemed great. She wasn't married to the daughter's father, a guy named Jeff, because things just didn't click between them. According to Ray, it was one of those rare, super amicable separations where there was no fighting, no child support drama, just peaceful co-parenting. It all sounded a little too good to be true, to be honest, but hey, I figured that's just how it was. Katie fit in really well with our friend group, and things seemed pretty smooth. But the real kicker? Jeff, 
the ex-boyfriend and father of Katie's daughter, somehow became Ray's best friend. Yeah, you heard that right. It's not something you see every day, but Ray and Jeff hit it off. They'd hang out, grab beers together, talk about sports, just regular guy stuff. Everything seemed like it was falling into place perfectly. They had this weird little modern family situation going on, and it all looked good from the outside. A couple of years go by, and Ray decides he's ready to tie the knot with Katie. Around this time, he confides in me that Jeff had been making some weird comments about Katie. Stuff like how great she was, and how Ray was lucky to have her. Harmless at first, right? But then it started to get a little too frequent, a little too intense. Jeff was always dropping these comments about how amazing Katie was, how perfect, like he was trying to get into Ray's head or something. Ray just brushed it off as Jeff being a good guy, but deep down I could tell it was starting to bug him. There were other signs too. Small, vague things that made Ray start to question just how amicable that breakup between Katie and Jeff really was. Jeff, it turns out, had been holding out hope for Katie all along. I guess Ray didn't want to see it. Or maybe he didn't believe it, because he still asked Jeff to be one of his groomsmen. Yep, Jeff was standing up there with us at the wedding. And let me tell you, the guy kept up his weird act right until the ceremony. Every other minute, he was telling Ray things like, don't choke, man, or you're a lucky guy. It was like he was doing this weird mind game. And Ray eventually had to tell him to knock it off because it was starting to freak him out. Anyway, the wedding day rolls around, and it's all set. Beautiful venue, everyone's dressed up, and for a while, everything seems normal. We go through the ceremony, Ray and Katie exchange vows, and the whole thing feels like it's going off without a hitch. I remember thinking, maybe this is going to turn out alright after all. But then we get to the reception. I'm sitting at my table with my significant other, watching Katie and Jeff's daughter dancing on the floor, just enjoying the evening. Out of nowhere, the music stops. The DJ grabs the mic and says, This next song is a special dedication from Jeff to Katie. And right then, I knew we were in for some serious drama. I look over at Ray, and his face just goes blank. The whole room freezes. Before anyone can process what's happening, the opening chords of Billy Ray Cyrus's It Could Have Been Me start blasting through the speakers. The look on Ray's face was pure shock, like he couldn't believe what was happening. And then, as if things couldn't get any worse, Jeff walks onto the dance floor, drops to one knee in front of everyone, and asks Katie to dance with him, and to be his wife. I kid you not, the dude straight up proposes to her at her own wedding. The audacity! Katie, to her credit, wasn't having any of it. She slapped him across the face so hard the sound echoed through the hall. The room was dead silent for a split second, and then Ray just snapped. He lost it, like full-on rage mode. He rushed at Jeff fists flying, and the two of them started brawling right there in front of everyone. Tables were knocked over, drinks went flying, and people started screaming. It was chaos. Story 11? So, a college buddy of mine was getting married, and as you can imagine, the celebration was in full swing. The ceremony itself was beautiful. Everything went off without a hitch, and by the time the reception rolled around, everyone was ready to cut loose and have a good time. Drinks were flowing, music was blasting, and the dance floor was packed with people having the time of their lives. Now, weddings always have that one guest who gets a little too into the party. And at this wedding, that person happened to be one of the bride's childhood friends. Let's call him Drunk Guy. Apparently, this guy had carried a torch for the bride ever since they were kids, but of course it never went anywhere. The bride had moved on, found her groom, and was now happily celebrating her big day. But Drunk Guy, oh no, he wasn't ready to let it go. As the night went on, Drunk guy just kept getting more and more hammered. At first, it was the usual stuff. Sloppy dancing, loud talking, a few spilled drinks. No big deal, right? But you could see something building in him. Like he was psyching himself up for something dumb. And sure enough, halfway through the reception, as the bride and groom were sharing a sweet moment on the dance floor, drunk guy stumbles to his feet, sloshing his drink all over the place, and heads toward the stage. At first, everyone was just watching him, thinking he was going to give some impromptu toast or tell a goofy story. But no, this guy had other plans. He grabs the mic from the DJ and slurring his words, starts declaring his undying love for the bride. And not in some cute, sentimental way either. This was full-on, cringy, drunken, soap opera-level stuff. I've loved you since we were kids, he yells, his voice cracking. It should have been me! You could practically feel the collective cringe ripple through the room. The bride's face went from shocked to horrified in about two seconds flat. And the groom? He just stood there, wide-eyed like he couldn't believe what he was hearing. Everyone froze, unsure whether to laugh or step in. But before anyone could react, the bride's father, who I guess had been sitting there stewing in anger, jumps up and rushes toward drunk guy. Now the bride's dad was one of those no-nonsense old-school types, and he wasn't about to let this guy ruin his daughter's wedding. He charges over, grabs drunk guy by the ear, 
and tries to drag him off the stage like a misbehaving kid. But here's where things take a turn. The dad was so furious and yanked so hard that to everyone's horror, he partially severed the guy's ear. I mean, we're talking a legit injury, not just a little tug. Blood started dripping down the side of his head, and that's when Drunk Guy let out this high-pitched scream. A scream so loud and ridiculous that it was hard not to laugh. I was a few drinks in myself at that point, and before I could stop myself, I let out this huge, uncontrollable laugh. And as bad as it sounds, I wasn't the only. A bunch of people around me started laughing too, and a few even clapped. I think the combination of the guy's high-pitched shrieking and the absolute absurdity of the situation just got the best of us. I mean, it's not every day you see a grown man dragged off a wedding stage by his ear like a misbehaving toddler. But, of course, once the initial laughter died down, it became clear this guy was actually hurt. A couple of people rushed over to help, and someone called for medical attention. The groom, understandably, looked like he wanted to throw drunk guy through a window, but the bride and her mom were both trying to calm things down before the whole night went completely off the rails. It was chaos. Half the guests were freaking out, and the other half were still trying to hold in their laughter. Drunk guy ended up getting escorted out, clutching his ear and mumbling apologies. I don't know if he was more embarrassed about his failed love confession or the fact that he was being carted out of the wedding with half an ear hanging. Either way, the reception was pretty much ruined after that. The bride and groom tried to salvage the night, but the whole mood had shifted. There's only so much you can do after something like that.